on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. BIP91 has now locked in, forcing all blocks to signal for SegWit, so I'll give you an update on the next steps. And speaking of SegWit, you can download a demo of the Eclair wallet and get an experience of what it's going to be like to use instant payments on the Lightning Network. All of that coming up on today's episode of the Cryptoverse, so stay tuned. Hi there guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I'm your host, Chris Coney, the founder of Cryptoversity, the online school where you can learn about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. Find out more at Cryptoversity.com. So, time for another update on exactly where we are with the whole Bitcoin scaling debate. So let's do that, shall we? Yesterday, we reached the next milestone, which was BIP91. So BIP91 is not only locked in, it has now activated. So that means that all blocks must signal for SegWit or they will be deemed invalid. So if we refer to the data, which today I'm going to refer to CoinDance, which is coin.dance, if you want to check this out, coin.dance forward slash blocks. This is where I'm getting my data from for today. So if we refer to this, the fact that all blocks now must signal for SegWit to be deemed valid means, well, it explains why 100% of mining power is now signaling for SegWit. Now, if you're looking at this on the screen, you'll say, well, why does it say 71.9? Well, the, the figure that it shows there is for the last week, whereas the yellow, the, the orange tab there is for the last 24 hours. And if I wave over that, it says 100% blocks mined today, 100% of them are signaling for SegWit, which you would imagine them too, because if they don't mine a SegWit block now, they're not going to get a block reward, as we mentioned the other day. Now, again, looking at Coindance, now that BIP91 has activated, it activated quite late in the current SegWit lock-in period. And there just aren't enough blocks left in the current lock-in period to reach the threshold. So the very next milestone is to wait for the end of the current SegWit lock-in period. And to see when that's going to end, you can actually come to Coindance yourself, which is linked in the video description. And then from here, you can look at the number of blocks remaining. And then right for me right now, that's like 482. It says that right about, um, it's just under there. There, I'll highlight it. So let me put a color on it, make it purple. So 482 blocks remaining in this signaling period. And that's not gonna be enough combined with how many SegWit blocks we've got so far to reach the threshold. So you can check that out for yourself at any time. Now, 482 blocks, right? A block is roughly 10 minutes. So if we multiply them together, it works out to about 3.4 days. That is 3.4 days until the current SegWit lock-in period ends. And once SegWit fails to lock in in this lock-in period, then we'll begin a brand new one. And remember, a lock-in period for SegWit lasts 2,016 blocks, which is about 14 days. And the thing that will be different about the next lock-in period when it begins is that BIP91, it forces all miners to signal for SegWit. So that's an extra layer that guarantees SegWit will reach the threshold in that next lock-in period. It just so happens that BIP91 appeared right in the middle of an exi existing activation period where some miners didn't have to signal for SegWit, and now they do. So are you with me so far? We wait 3.4 days for the current SegWit lock-in period to fail, which is guaranteed to fail in this period. 
Then we wait another 14 days for SegWit to lock in. And then finally, the miners have another 14 day grace period to get their systems in order before SegWit actually activates and SegWit transactions become legal on the network. So all that takes is roughly to the 23rd of August. That's when wallets will begin sending and receiving real SegWit transactions. But even that's not it, because we're part of, this is all part of the SegWit 2x proposal. You know, the, the activation of SegWit then sets the date for when the two megabyte hard fork will happen. So that happens 90 days after SegWit activates. So given the timeline I just gave you there, it puts the two megabyte hard fork around the 18th of November. So to recap then, in three days time, SegWit will fail to lock in and a new lock-in period will begin. Two weeks later, which will be around the 10th of August, SegWit will lock in because BIP91 forces all miners to support it. Two weeks after that, around the 24th of August, SegWit will officially activate and be legal on the Bitcoin network. And then three months after that, 90 days, which is around the 18th of November, BIP 102, SegWit 2x, will activate and trigger a hard fork to increase the block size to two megabytes. And if that all goes well, we'll be out of the woods completely. And the Bitcoin network will have gone through some significant upgrades and then we can get on with rolling it out to the entire world with, and innovating on top of it. So that's my roundup of where we are with the whole SegWit, SegWit2x and that forking situation for today. And so that's the next milestone. I'll continue to do these segments as we go along um, when there's significant things to say, just so that kind of like I can hold your hand all the way through to the 18th of November when we finally get that two megabyte hard fork and SegWit and then we'll be clear. So second story I want to talk about today. The Eclair wallet have announced they have a demo app. This is very interesting. Now you may have heard me talk before about these guys called Async. So I've got a I've got a, one of their medium posts up right here. So Async is A C I N Q. If you've not heard me talk about them before, don't worry about it. They're basically a team of developers who are building an implementation of the Lightning network. So this is a network layer that will be built on top of Bitcoin that will allow instant transactions at incredibly small fees. Now this is important within the context of say the SegWit discussion and the SegWit activation because SegWit makes it a damn sight easier to build lightning networks. And, and SegWit also allows many other interesting things to be built on Bitcoin um, because of advanced scripting languages and so on. And of course the lightning network is one of these technologies that can be built on top of Bitcoin more easily thanks to SegWit. Now, they have a couple of animated GIFs in this blog post here, and I want to draw your attention to the first one. So I'll just scroll down to it here. Here it is. It's a mobile phone app, so that's what the screenshot is showing us here. So I'll draw your attention to this. This is the first time that I've seen a, an actual graphical user interface for the Lightning network or a Lightning um, wallet. So it shows here a list of transaction and transaction history, right? And each transaction has like a different symbol next to it, depending on whether it was sent over the regular Bitcoin network or the Litecoin network. And if it was sent over the Lightning network, there's this little blue circle with a lightning bolt inside it. And finally, at the bottom of the blog post here, if I scroll down even further, they have this heading that says, this is all fine and dandy, but how do I try it out? And then they have this mock-up of a little coffee shop online and here you can download the Android app, which is it enables you to sort of simulate the experience 
of buying a coffee with a Lightning payment because these are instantly confirmed transactions. Now, the other thing about Lightning payments is that they are private. So that's because they're not broadcast to the public blockchain by default. Only when a Lightning channel closes does it broadcast it to the main Bitcoin network. And, and even then, that's only the final settlement. So it's only the final transaction in the whole sequence of Lightning payments that gets settled on the main network. So that's the only one that's public anyway. And no one has any idea what happened in between times. I mean, I'm not going to go into the details of the Lightning Network. I've covered that in previous episodes, and I will do as we move closer to the uh, the launch of the Lightning Network. But for now, all you need to know is it's going to enable instant transactions for very low fees, and they're going to be private transactions. So this doesn't particularly bode well for the likes of Litecoin and Dash, does it? I mean, if Bitcoin gets, you know, if it gets a Litecoin, if it gets a lightning network rather bitcoin has the greatest adoption lightning adds private transactions and instant transactions with low fees where does that leave like the litecoin and the dash networks well the only answer i can really give to this at this moment in time is well, it leaves litecoin and dash with some serious competition so that's all i've got to say about the lightning network for today think on that question. Alrighty then. Thank you very much for joining me today, guys. If you like this episode of the Cryptoverse, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, get subscribed. Or if you want access to my very best stuff, check out Cryptoversity.com. Alright guys, that's all for today. I'll be back tomorrow with another edition of the Market Roundup and another edition of this news and commentary show. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney saying, bye for now.